My name is Amber Clifford Napoleon. I'm a professor of anthropology at the University of Central Missouri in Warrensburg. Warrensburg is about 45 minutes to an hour outside Kansas City, depending on where you live. Uh, we're a community of about 20,000 people, a campus of about 10,000 students. Uh, and I'm here today to talk to you about the anthropology program and a little bit about the museum. I'm also the director of the McClure Archives and University Museum at UCM. So, well, I want to start out by showing you a few slides about what anthropology is and what the different subfields are so that you can start to get an understanding of what we do at UCF. Give me just a minute. Okay, so what's anthropology? I mean, maybe you haven't ever heard of anthropology before. Maybe you've heard of archaeology. Maybe you've heard of linguistics. Maybe you've heard of forensics. Maybe you love bones or you love forensic files. You love stuff like that. All of that is anthropology. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about what the different kinds of anthropology are. But first, what is it? What is anthropology? So anthropology, there's the technical definition on the screen, the study of human development and diversity over space and through time. But basically, we study people. Uh, in anthropology, we study human beings. We study human beings archaeologically. We study their bones. We study their cultures. We talk to them in real life, real time. We're studying human beings wherever they are and whenever they've been. That's over space and through time. And that's what we as anthropologists are trying to do. Most of all, there's a couple of questions that we're trying to answer. How do other people make sense of their world? And what do we have in common with other human beings on the planet? How do other people make sense of their world? I mean, you explain your world, where you live, what you do every day, you explain it a certain way, but that's an insider's perspective. You're telling your own story. But we too often assume that what we hear on the news or what we see on television or in the movies or online about other cultures and other people who live distantly from us, we assume those things to be factual when we know that nobody can explain our story the way we can, but we think we can understand other people's stories from these little bits of information. So anthropology is based, number one, on the idea that you want to know what others say about their world, how they explain their reality, rather than how their reality is filtered through a bunch of other things. The second thing is, what do we all have in common? This may seem like a weird question, I don't know, but we're interested in looking at things differently than you've perhaps been asked to look at them before. Like sometimes in social studies classes or in geography classes, or even in history classes, you get asked to think about human beings as separate from each other, right? Russian history versus English history versus French history versus American history. Well, if we're talking about geography, Here's the geography of Mongolia, and this is what they grow, and this is what they eat, and this is what they do, switch countries, right? But anthropologists know that human beings don't pay a whole lot of attention to borders, and they don't pay a whole lot of attention to uh, whatever our list might be of what they're supposed to eat or what they're supposed to do. Human beings do what human beings do. They have a lot of free will, and they live in multiple environments with great differences. So we're trying to understand what all people on the planet have in common. Uh, and the answer to that is much more than you would expect, uh, but that's very much what we're interested in trying to figure out. <clears throat> now, anthropology has lots of what we call subfields. You might call them specializations, uh, little divisions in anthropology, because anthropology is a big, big concept, right? Human beings and where they go and what they do every minute through time and over space and what they have in common. I mean, this is a lot, right? So anthropologists split things up into subfields, and there are five subfields. We're going to go through them one at a time, just so I can tell you a little about uh, what they are and what our students do and the careers you can have in those subfields, okay? So the first one is physical and biological anthropology. For those of you who love forensic files, for those of you who love bones, for those of you who love primates and the zoo is your number one stop. Uh, that is physical and biological anthropology. Also, for those of you who are interested in evolution, uh, whether that's human evolution or animal evolution, all this is phys bio. Uh, so we study human evolutionary origins and physical diversity of human beings. Uh, so 
why human beings are taller in some places and shorter than others. We study race and the idea of skin color and how that has changed over time and through space. Um, this includes paleoanthropology, so that's the oldest remains. You want to, if you've ever heard of Lucy, for example. Uh, primatology, that's working with chimps, for example. And then forensics, these are the people who do the work of forensic files and bones where you take um, human remains, not soft tissue, but bone tissue, uh, and you examine it so you can figure out the age, the height, the sex, uh, sometimes the race um, of, of these particular remains. Now, one of our anthropologists is a biological and forensic anthropologist, Dr. Hannah Marsh. She actually specializes in skull size and skull capacity. Um, she also teaches forensics. We have our own forensics lab. We do teach forensics, train forensics. Uh, you get to work on actual cases. We have our own human remains collection for you to work on in the lab. Uh, and we do send students off to programs in forensic anthropology frequently to get their graduate degrees. As a matter of fact, a couple of years ago, one of our students was the only undergraduate at a summer uh, field school for forensic anthropologists. So we do really well in that regard. Next one is archaeology. So archaeology is probably the one you've had the most exposure to because uh, you see a lot of things about archaeology in the news, on TV, in reality shows, even in Indiana Jones we see archaeology, right? So archaeology means that you're studying the technical and cultural development of people who can no longer speak for themselves, okay? over time, people who can no longer speak for themselves. It doesn't mean the, the culture is dead. It just means that the people who built those things or wrote those things cannot explain them to you. So you use material evidence of them to understand what they were doing and where and when. It sometimes gets split into prehistoric and historic. Usually the dividing line is when someone is able to have a written literature. So prehistoric means before writing and historic means after writing. In the United States, prehistoric means before Columbus and historic means after Columbus. Uh, but in, for example, Saudi Arabia, prehistoric is everything until about 1939 and then it's historic from there. So it depends very much on what culture you're in. The second member of the anthropology program at UCN is an archaeologist, a historic archaeologist who specializes uh, in indigenous Missouri and in an area called Little Dixie. It's a, a section of the Missouri River, sort of up close to Arrow Rock, uh, Columbia, up in that area. Uh, and he teaches all of our archaeology classes. He teaches anthropology of food, which is an awesome class. And he also teaches field school. So every other year, we teach you how to dig, how to do archaeological excavation. Dr. Yelton also is the program coordinator, so he's the one you talk to if you want to join our program. And he takes our students on a trip to London every summer. And we didn't, we weren't able to go this past summer because of COVID. It looks like the next summer we would be going in summer of 22, uh, but it is a week in London looking at archaeological sites and museums that includes Stonehenge and a couple of free days to do what you'd like to do. Uh, but again, Dr. Yelton is the program coordinator, so if you're interested in learning more, that's who you are going to be connecting with. Cultural anthropology is what I teach. Uh, this is about the study of living people, extant human living people. So I do field work, which means I go out and talk to people and do what they do and eat what they eat and see what they see and talk to them about what's happening so that I can better understand their culture from the inside out. Um, my specialization is actually, I actually have two. One of them is uh, Middle Eastern textiles, and the other one is popular music studies. So I have two books out, one about queer heavy metal fans, and one about the underground jazz scene in Kansas City. I study popular music and identity. So I get to travel around the world to go to heavy metal shows and interview heavy metal fans. It's a, it's a pretty nice gig. Uh, and then I'm also the director of the museum. Uh, the McClure on campus is a general museum. We have about 30,000 objects, and it operates also as a lab for anthropology students. Linguistics is the study of language and language patterns. I also teach linguistics. Uh, we've sent lots of students uh, to teach English as a second language in places like Korea, 
China, Vietnam, um, and North Africa. Uh, I also have a lot of linguistic students that go on to graduate school either in linguistics or in teaching English as a second language. Applied anthropology is the newest of the subfields. It's where you study how you can apply anthropology to other world problems. Um, I teach applied anthropology as well, where we take on an actual problem in the community and then we work through trying to solve it in some way, trying to alleviate that problem. Uh, last year we were working with Survival, which is the Women and Children's Shelter here in Warrensburg, and we'll probably be working with them for the next couple of years and applied. Um, and what we're doing is helping them file their state and federal case reports. Okay. So, before I go and finish up, let me tell you a couple of things about what you can do with a career in anthropology. Our anthropology program prepares you to do a lot of things. We are a writing intensive, presentation intensive program. So you're gonna get lots of experience speaking before groups of people. You're gonna get lots of experience doing research of all sorts. You're gonna get lots of experience writing all sorts of different things like case studies, like book reviews, like site reports, like field reports. So you get a lot of different ways to present information. You're also going to learn how to interview people and how to talk to people uh, about who they are and what they do. So for that reason, we have a lot of students who go on to graduate school very successfully with scholarships and fellowships and full rides uh, in all the subfields of anthropology. We've had students go to grad school. We also have students who specialize in forensics and primatology who work in zoos. We also have students who work as teachers in English as a second language, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we also have students who work for non-governmental organizations. We've had students that work for IRC, for example. Uh, so we have students who have worked for international organizations, non-governmental organizations, the UN, the Library of Congress. Uh, also, sometimes you can get jobs that you weren't thinking about. For instance, we've had a lot of students who have worked as insurance investigators. Why? Well, because they know how to do research, they know how to write, uh, they know how to present information, and they know how to investigate. Uh, and, of course, they know how to talk to people, right? So we've had a lot of students work for insurance companies, for legal offices, places where you need to do uh, some investigative work. A lot of our students work in refugee services and refugee resettlement. A lot of our students also get jobs working for uh, any sort of information place, National Archives, for example, uh, and of course museums. We employ lots of students at museums. One of the great things about our program is that we have a field requirement. So sometime in your program, you will either have to go to London or you'll have to do an internship or you'll have to do special projects, a, a readings course if you're planning on graduate school. So we make sure that you actually have experience in the field before you go on to grad school or a job. And the other thing is that we run a cohort system. Our program is relatively small, only about 50 majors, but everybody knows everybody else. We're more like a family than we are a major. Uh, we have our own lab, we have the museum, we have our own lounge area for students. Uh, we spend a lot of time with each other, learning, going on field trips, doing field work, so that by the time you leave UCM, you'll have not just your degree, but also an endless amount of experience, maybe even publications, maybe even presentations, and you will be ready for the next step without a problem. So check out our resources in our digital booth. That includes some videos. There's one about me if you're really that interested. Uh, and our digital brochure is there as well. And if you really want some more information about our program, or you'd like to schedule a campus visit, maybe come to campus and check it out, sitting in one of our classes, you can email Dr. Yelton, the aforementioned archaeologist and program coordinator. His email is yelton, Y-E-L-T-O-N, at ucmo.edu. Just email him your name, your email, explain to him that you saw this presentation and that you need more info, and Dr. Yelton will be happy to help you right away. I hope you're having a great time at the career fair, and if there's anything you need to know about Anthro, don't hesitate to give UCM a try. Thank you.